Thank you for tuning into the Gift Up podcast. Let's get to the midseason power rankings, starting with 16 through 32 tonight, 1 through 15 tomorrow. I'm going to give one positive statement per team and move on to the next to keep the list flowing. Starting at the bottom of the barrel with the New York Jets at 32. The one positive thing I will say about the Jets is at least they acknowledge that Sam Darnold is their quarterback going forward. Despite all the other negativity surrounding the New York Jets, at least they admitted that. And they're going to use a high draft pick either by trading back or getting a top player on defense next year. I like the sound of that over going Trevor Lawrence when you don't need to. Next up, the Jaguars at 31. They are the easiest team to describe in football. They draft well, but nobody wants to stay. The positive thing for the Jaguars is their drafts are good. My only suggestion would be to keep the young star talent happy and in-house. Who knows where they would be if nobody left. If they found a, if they were able to find a quarterback and all their defensive players didn't leave, who knows where the Jags would be right now, maybe competing for another AFC championship. Next up at 30, the Cowboys. The one positive thing I'll say about the Cowboys is they have a talented roster. They just don't have a quarterback. And because they don't have a quarterback, they find themselves this far down the list. Uh, but my one positive statement for the Cowboys would be you got a hell of a roster, but you got to get some quarterback play, even if it's average. And right now they're not getting even average quarterback play. Next up at 29, the New York Giants. The one positive thing I will say about the Giants is their offense has a chance to be dominant next year. They get this offensive line right with Saquon healthy and Daniel Jones off play action, who's already proven he can throw a good pass or two. I think the Giants could have a potent offensive attack. That's a positive for them. At 28, I got Washington. The one positive thing I'll say for Washington is that defense is nasty, especially in the front seven. It's physical. So heading into this offseason, you definitely want to get a weapon offensively, no doubt. I understand that. But I would just keep adding to this defense and make it a top five, top three unit under Ron Rivera. Why not, right? Get more pass rushers, get more linebackers, get more in the secondary, give Ron Rivera everything and let that defense be great. I like the way it's shaping up so far. That's a positive. At 27, the Philadelphia Eagles. The one positive I will say is you got Carson Wentz, you got Miles Sanders, you got Zach Ertz, you got guys that can ball, you know, you got guys that can put up some points, but they need help. They need help. So going forward for the Eagles is get more reliable receivers, please. Quit drafting receivers and signing receivers that are injury prone. Can we get Carson Wentz some help? He's making the most throwing to Falgem. What could he do if he had a couple legit guys on the outside? Just saying. That's a positive for the Eagles. That offense is Patterson, Carson Wentz. I trust them heading into 2021 next year. Next up, the Houston Texans at 26. The one positive that I will say for the Houston Texans is their offense. Deshaun Watson is nasty, but you got to have a supporting cast around him. You got to have a physical offensive line that can run block. You got to have play action. You got to have a legit number one receiver on the outside, which they really don't have. Will Fuller's nasty, but they need that tall physical guy like they lost in DeAndre Hopkins. You know, they need somebody like that back to make this offense complete and keep the offensive line up to code. And for the first time ever, will Houston please go out there and sign a running back that's actually legit or go high and draft one early? I don't know why they neglect that position. I mean, we dealt with Lamar Miller and now we're dealing with David Johnson and his wrist injuries. And it's just like, come on guys, draft the running back. Everybody else is doing it. It's just, it's just something I wanted to say. This Houston offense should be nasty. It should be great. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with Bill O'Brien and his butt cheek chin? I'm going to fill it up with putty and smack him. It frustrates me, man. When you got a talent like Deshaun Watson and you waste it, it frustrates me. It does. Next up, the Lions at 25. The one positive thing I'll say about the Lions is the offense. The defense, eh, it's back and forth. Patricia, he's supposed to be a defensive mastermind, whatever. But the one thing I will say about the Lions is that offense has multiple weapons. Hopefully Galladay can get healthy and not have to jump 80 feet in the air every game to make a play because nobody else steps up. Um, but that's what I would build on. I would keep building on this offensive line. 
go out there and get another big time receiver and get rid of Marvin Jones and his weak ass and give Stafford some weapons to work with. DeAndre Swift's only going to get better. TJ Hawkinson's only going to get better. Galladay's only going to get better. Keep adding to it. It's potent. That's a positive for the Lions. They could have one of the better offenses in the league if the organization puts their mind to it. Next up at 24, we got the Rams, man. And the Rams are like an egg yolk with a shell. And then Jared Goff is that egg yolk all brittle inside, just waiting to get smacked around. And once you get to him, it's game over. And that is a problem with the Rams. And that's why they're down on the power rankings here. You get to Goff, it just snowballs into problems. But the one positive thing that I'm going to say about the Rams is I like that defense. I like the cornerstones. Aaron Donald, okay, Jalen Ramsey, that's a good start. But now let's add to that, man. Let's add more pass rushers next to Donald. Let's get another top corner and put him next to Jalen Ramsey. That's the kind of stuff I want to see. Let's beef up this linebacking core. That is what the Rams need to do. And that's the positive I'm looking at here. You guys, you have the best defensive lineman in the league in Aaron Donald, and you got the best corner in the league in Jalen Ramsey. Add to it. Because obviously Jerry Goff is going to be there for at least another year or two, right? I mean, there's no getting out of that contract. I'm I'm sure as shit sure that nobody's going to want to trade for his ass, whether he looks like Ryan Gosling or not. I don't think anybody's going to want to give up two, three hundred million dollars or, or whatever it is for, for Jared Goff. So the Rams are there for a reason. And if you're going to go forward with Goff, build up the defense and make it overwhelming for teams that way, because no matter what you do offensively, unless the run game is perfect, Jared Goff is going to crumble in big time moments. Next up 23, the 49ers. And this is a fair place to put them with all the injuries and all the decimation that's taking place with them this season. This is a fair place to put them. But honestly, the positive thing about the 49ers is they really don't have to do anything different. Just keep adding talent and stay healthy. <clears throat> That's what I would do if I was the 49ers going into next season. You, you Obviously, if you're the 49ers, you got to be looking towards next season now. You're not going to a Super Bowl this year. Nothing crazy is going to happen. So plan for next year, plan to get healthy, and then just keep adding talent on both sides of the football. Shanahan is a great head coach. His run schemes and the play action and his the, the routes that he has the receivers running, the aggression of the defense. I like everything about the 49ers. They just got to stay healthy. Next up at 22, the Dolphins. And the positive with the Dolphins that I'll say is that defense, man. That secondary is nasty. They're physical up front. If they keep adding pieces to that front seven, with Brian Flores, the way he's coaching and how he's got this defense and team playing, I'm excited about the Dolphins going forward, man. You know, the positive, build on that defense. Next up at 21, the Browns. And if I'm the Browns, the positive that I'm looking at is the offense. I'm looking at that offense, and I'm thinking, all right, well, we got Nick Chubb. We got Kareem Hunt. We may or may not have Odell Beckham next year, but who cares? We got Landry. We can get another receiver in the draft or free agency, but build up that damn offensive line and make that one of the best rushing attacks in football so Baker can do the play action, be comfortable, all of that. If I'm the Browns this offseason, I'm focusing on that offensive line first and nothing else. Baker's their franchise quarterback. That's who they're going for with in the future. Let's protect them. Next up at 20, the Bengals. And the one positive thing I'll say about the Bengals is that offense, man. Higgins looking good. It looks like they finally got their franchise quarterback in a long time. And Joe Burrow, the legend of Joe Burrow grows. And quite frankly, uh, with the Bengals, all you got to do is build up that offensive line. And Joe Burrow is going to be whipping work. You got to like the sound of that. I think that's a really big positive. And I was impressed with what they did against the Titans. You know, the fact that this is Joe Burrow's rookie year and they were able to compete like that. I think the sky's the limit for them going forward into this off season, heading into the free agency in the draft, uh, build that offensive lineup, build the defense up, and you're going to be competing in the playoffs. Next up at 19, I got the Patriots and I'm not going to count Bill Belichick out, man. Um, look, at, he, he's just too good of a coach. Even with a depleted defense, he still keeps his team in games. I don't know how the hell he does it. Cause that's one of the worst front sevens that I've ever seen 
in the history of the NFL. And I'm serious about that. Like that, that front seven for New England is depleted. And somehow Belichick gets those schemes right. He knows what teams are going to do. And he keeps his team fighting. And that is the positive for me. Uh, never count Belichick out. And keep building on what they're doing. As long as Belichick's head coach, you keep building on that defense. He's going to make teams work for every yard that they get. And offensively going forward, guys, and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer on Cam Newton, but the Patriots are going to have to go out there and find a quarterback at some point. I have no idea what move Belichick's going to do. We might even see Jimmy G back here, but when it's all said and done, uh, who, who knows what's going to happen. Um, but I'm never going to count out Bill Belichick. And every again, if they go through another offseason and free agency draft with Belichick at the helm, they're just going to get better. All right, guys, three more to go. At 18, we got the Falcons. Talent stock, good offensive line, young. Gurley running the football. Matt Ryan, you got Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst. What's not to love? I think if they beef up that defense going into this offseason, you know, get some pass rushers, get more physical, you know, bulkier up front, you know, more physical to stop the run. I think the Falcons are going to be a team to reckon with next year. Um, We'll see what happens with Raheem Morris at coach. Um, I guess I would like to see the Falcons maybe go out there and get another head coach, maybe experiment a little bit, get somebody in there that can call some pretty, you know, some creative offensive plays. And I, I think the Falcons could be quite dangerous. So if I had to say a positive, it's that offense and just finding the right coach to call the plays. Two more guys. Next up at 17, the Raiders. The positive that I'll say about the Raiders is the offense next year could be promising. Unfortunately, this year, it just doesn't feel like it's coming together with all the injuries. Like Brian Edwards being hurt and Ruggs not being 100% and Josh Jacobs not being 100%. The offensive line not being 100%. But the positive for me, for the Raiders, is the offense. And next year, you know, heading into the offseason, Keep building on that offensive line because they're going to have to. Like Richie Incognito is not going to be able to suit up again next year. So they're going to have to really figure out the guard position um, and just get better because then Josh Jacobs can pound it. Derek Carr off play action. And look, Derek Carr, in my opinion, is a warrior. Um, A lot of people had a lot of bad things to say about him last year and this offseason too. Everybody was saying Marcus Mariota would be the quarterback. And I told them, you guys are stupid for that. Like, I I don't mean to be rude, but that's stupid. No, Mariota sucks, man. Derek Carr isn't afraid to take a hit, and he's going to stand in the pocket and deliver the football. He just needs his guys to be healthy. Waller and him need some help, man. And Ruggs alone isn't going to be able to do that with the speed. They need Brian Edwards back out on the field. They need to get this offensive line right for next year. And God damn it, Josh Jacobs needs to stay healthy. I mean, what the hell? I mean, that that was the selling point here. The power run game with Josh Jacobs and everything branched off of that. That's the positive, but we got to see it. Next year, I guess that we got to wait till next year, I guess, guys. Just too many injuries going on right now. And we're going to cap it off at 16 with the Cardinals. And again, I want to make it a point that none of the teams that we're mentioning here are going to go to the playoffs or at least go deep into the playoffs. Uh, maybe an eight and eight team gets in because of the extended playoffs that Goodell and company set up. But I wanted to make that a point too. Um, that's why I'm being tough on these teams that we're mentioning today. And we're going to cap it off with the Cardinals. And look, there's a lot of things about the Cardinals that I like uh, when Kyler Murray is on and that offense is moving in every which way in every direction. It's hard to keep track of everything. Christian Kirk, uh, Isabella going deep, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, short passes, throwing it up to him and and how physical he is. Um, It's uh, Kyler Murray possibly running the football out of the backfield. This offense is dynamic. And that is the positive note that I want to put on with the Cardinals. But the one thing I'll say is they got to get better on the offensive line. They got to have more of a consistent run game. It can't be all flamboyant with Kyler Murray trying to do everything and it's going past happy that that's not going to work week in and week out. So the biggest thing I would say for the Cardinals is get physical on both sides of the football heading into this off season. If you want a legit chance to push into the playoffs next year. So with that guys, that caps off tonight, 16 through 32, 
appreciate all the comments that you guys gave today. Um, and tomorrow I'll come with the rest of the power rankings, one through 15. We'll follow the same formula, give a positive about each team. Uh, thank you guys. Make sure to hit the like button, share the videos and subscribe.